the while loading command to uh, make the host starting off. Okay. Jinjin, do, do we have a ticket or a uh, issue for that? Not yet, not yet, but I know um, Rahu and uh, Su are working on it. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and just create a placeholder and then have them update the details of it. Yep, sounds good. All right, perfect. So the, <laughs> the other item is uh, Prometheus. I think that uh, uh, EO will uh, uh, will work with Kobe to make sure that uh, we get it done for uh, 0 0.50. In my understanding, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, the patch is at the moment is still pretty much a work in progress, meaning that from a functional perspective, uh, we have uh, the basic functionality implemented, but we need at least unit tests. And uh, the patch as it is, uh, will implement a basic set of metrics, meaning that uh, it's not going to be uh, like extremely trivial, like uh, you can already get uh, how many agents are running, but it's not like, uh, it's not offering a, a great deal of details. Is that correct, uh, Kobe or Io? Uh, yeah, indeed. Okay. <clears throat> and um, <clears throat> so this is uh, the target for the 0 0.50 0 release. Uh, I, I believe that we will expand on this uh, in the next releases by adding more metrics. And I think that as a community, we should uh, work uh, together on defining uh, which metrics we want to expose because it would be nice if we use Prometheus, not only for gathering data about the status of the system, uh, like you know how many agents are running, uh, uh, how many network policies are implemented, uh, which are at the end of the day informations that are are useful but are also pretty much static in nature. It would be nice if we start uh, collecting real-time series, uh, time series data like uh, you know throughput, uh, throughput data, packet processing data, uh, flow processing information. So it would be nice to define which are the metrics that uh, we believe are uh, uh, more important. Define a way to calculate them so that we can uh, we can expose them into Prometheus. And uh, another topic that I believe uh, might be interesting and uh, uh, it will be then to not only collect these metrics in Prometheus, but then also consume them in the Octant UI plugin. Uh, I don't know what's your feedback, if you feel like this will be something good to have or maybe you don't want to have an interaction between Octant and Prometheus. Um, my understanding of Octane that it's very simple UI. I'm not sure how could you shoot matches there. Um, that is that is indeed what what, uh, what my question as well. This is something that we need to assess the feasibility if we can uh, um, like uh, connect Octane with something like on a dashboard or stuff like that, so that we can visualize the data. That, that, that is a good point. It's an open question about feasibility. But uh, in terms of, in principle, do you think that uh, Octant could be the right way to, pre the right place to present this data? Or maybe we should uh, keep a minimal amount of information in the Octant UI plugin and then, you know, then defer, um, defer Prometheus data collection, data visualization to some other tool which can build, uh, be built using Grafana dashboards or whatever? Um, I think Octane itself probably cannot give you much uh, visualization functionality. Uh, but I'm not sure if you can embed any other, I mean, like uh, put some URL to the Octane uh, UI view and then redeploy to some other UI. But I think itself can probably cannot support the visualization of the uh, so metrics. That's probably something I need to follow up with Patrick on and ask him what the intent, you know, on Octant is in regards to, you know, is it only going to show static um, information or is it going to show dynamic information? Um, yeah. I say if you want, maybe you can show some simple stats. But uh, what I mean that probably you cannot have this with the ones, the visualization of, of the metrics and stats. 
I'm definitely not a front-end person, so I'm totally not the right person to ask this. But Cody, I was uh, I was thinking that maybe you can involve also EO in this uh, conversation because uh, she has some uh, front-end experience. And uh, okay. EO, this is something that might be interesting for you. Perhaps uh, you can collaborate with Cody with the Octan team to find if there is a way for uh, doing some sort of advanced data visualization. Mm -hmm. Okay, sure. I think for the basic matrix, we can show it in the table, but it, if it involves with uh, time series, maybe we need some more complex yeah, visualization. Mm -hmm. I agree. Well, and we also need to know where Octan is querying that from, right? So um, if it's operating in a federated manner, is it having to reach across to get dynamic data? There's, there's a lot of variables there that I, I think we definitely need to <laughs> see what we're doing from a TMC perspective as well. No, I mean, Octant will be gathering a data, the data source will be Prometheus. You know, Octant will be consuming Prometheus basically. At the moment, for instance, I think that Octant is consuming data from some CRDs that we define. Okay. The idea will be okay. to either uh, add the Prometheus or consume only from Prometheus all the data, which is typically what happens in many dashboards that you see. Uh, I typically see the ones built with the Grafana. They connect to Prometheus and they get all the sort of information about your system. And right. for instance, the OpenShift dashboard does something very similar. It gets information about data, uh, health state information and uh, dynamic data about your cluster connecting to a Prometheus service that is uh, running inside the cluster itself. So basically they have, uh, they have uh, the OpenShift dashboard that right. reads data from Prometheus that collects data from every node. Let me refine my question. Do we, do we intend Octant to be a one-to-one a -one mapping per cluster or are you looking at it as a summary across several clusters? Um, I don't know yet. I think that it has to be one to one, right? In the way that we are designing it at the moment. Okay. Like that, yeah. I think that we don't have the ability of adding multiple entry instances to a given octant instance. Okay. Right? Then that then that makes a lot more sense. Yeah. Anyway, so I think that it, that is all for Prometheus. Uh, uh, we also had a, a few issues that uh, were deferred from uh, uh, from uh, sorry that were deferred from 0 0.4 so let me look at the current 0 0.5 payload and perhaps also let me share my screen so that uh sorry i have one more issue yes right? Yep. Um, basically, recently, uh, Antonio and I found uh, there are several issues with IPsec. Um, I think, especially uh, the most serious one, uh, I just um, drew the course yesterday. Uh, uh, likely, it's a regression in 0 0.4.1. Um, that I uh, try to change the IPsec tunnel so to use flow based tunneling uh, for the sending uh, pass. That means we um, we send the packets to the default tunnel port uh, using flow-based tunnels. For the not using the IPsec tunnels, we create an OS bridge. Uh, for the same side, I found that uh, unfortunately, uh, the, the received packets will still go to the IPsec tunnels uh, because we, uh, we create one uh, tunnel port for every remote node. Uh, even we don't send the packets using these tunnels, but we use tunnel zero. Uh, but for the received packet stems, OS do uh, input them from the from the uh, these IPsec, IPsec tunnel ports. Uh, I think these packets will be dropped. Um, um, unfortunately, uh, it's not captured by CI. I I now suspect because in CI. Um, we just create the Antria, deploy Antria with IPsec disabled first, then we uh, enable Antria and redeploy, uh, and, sorry, we, we enable IPsec and redeploy Antria. Um, but when uh, Antria engine starts, uh, since we don't really change the tunnel type from uh, the default one west down to GRE, uh, it's a little complex, but what happened that uh, 
uh, I think in CI, uh, when we enable IPsec, actually the, the path still goes through the tunnel zero. Uh, for tunnel zero using a Winston, Winston tunnel type, uh, for the IPsec tunnel we actually use GRE. Uh, so even we have this IPsec policy created, it's for GRE traffic. So in the CI test, uh, mm -hmm. After we enable IPsec, actually the, the traffic is not really encrypt, encrypt, encrypted by IPsec, but it still goes through Western Tunnel and Tunnel Zero, uh, so a loss and break. But I believe if you uh, create a entire concept from scratch and with IPsec enabled, then um, the traffic will be, the receive, the tra receive the traffic will be dropped. Uh, okay. So it's, it's like a serious. Yes, I see. Uh, but let me see if uh, I understood. Uh, so basically, the issue is that uh, it's it, it got not detected because in the CI, after you enable IPsec, the traffic is actually still going on the GRE tunnel and not being encrypted. Uh, Western tunnel, actually, because Sorry? by default, by default we're using Western to be the tunnel. Ah, okay, VXLAN. Sorry, VXLAN tunnel, but it's not being encrypted. That's right. And if you start from scratch with the IPsec. The, turn, the, the return traffic is not being received. Uh, it's received on the uh, host, but it's okay. input from the the IPsec tunnel port, not the tunnel zero. Okay. And after changing zero dot four dot one, uh, we'll drop the packets in OS bridge. Okay. So got basically, it. they got dropped on the, uh, in the OS bridge. Perfect. So yeah, it's like a uh, fairly broken, yeah. That's yes. <laughs> it's just one of the issues. There are some other smaller issues. Um, so, Jandron, Jandron, if we if we update the test so that uh, I mean, if we update the agent code so that we delete the port and recreate it when the total type has changed, would that solve the issue? Yep. Uh, so, probably we can discuss the fix uh, offline. Uh, for the micro that should we uh, get, create a patch release or we should wait for 0 0.5 or zero? What do you guys think? Uh, it all depends, in my opinion, on whether you think this can be fixed in two days or whether this can be fixed is needed at least a week to get fixed. Fix if it can be fixed in two days, then uh, yeah, we can make a patch release, I guess. Uh, in, in two days, I mean, like a few days, including also addressing uh, CI tests so that they are properly covered. But if it takes more time and we will get closer anyway to the 0 0.50 release, then perhaps we might just create the issue so people are aware that IPsec is not really working as expected and then fix it straight in 0 0.50. I don't know, Cody, what do you reckon? Uh, first, my oh. estimate is like uh, probably early, like three or four days, not two days, but uh, probably not one week. <laughs> I see. Cody, go ahead. The the, we, we've already announced support for IPsec, so I definitely think that um, since we've already announced the support, fixing it and, 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 and doing a patch release makes a lot of sense. Um, the, the other question I have is, what are you going to have to delay to focus on that? Um, I, 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 don't, I don't think that we'll, that we'll have a lot of customers using IPsec probably before the next release is the only other issue, so to weigh. Um, so with that, I would say, go ahead and, and, and prioritize it, get it done. Um, we'll, we can issue a, uh, a, a patch once you, once you get to the end of it, if we think we're you know, still far enough out from our next release, because since we're going on a four week iteration here, um, it's gonna be quite a while before we have another release. Okay, let me work on the fix and uh, we can uh, come back again once we have a fix. Okay, good. All right, so um, say that I will proceed to the usual boring uh, analysis of the current release payload to check on status on and what maybe needs to be already pushed out. So yes, I want to annoy you to that. So I will start with uh, the first of the 11 issues that we have on the 0 0.50 release. First one is issue number 181 the cleanup operation and Antonin, any update here? Uh, no updates, but uh, 
Yeah, I think it's, I mean, I said that last time, but I think it's doable for the 5.0 release, but I didn't work on this in the last couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. But I, I don't think that it's a huge task. So it's just a matter for you of finding some time and doing it, right? Yeah, but I mean, there is a, it, it depends on, on Windows support at, at also because it's likely to be different on Linux and, and Windows. Makes sense. Okay, then uh, we second issue, it's uh, Prometheus and uh, we already discussed it, so I guess we can skip it. Um, has anyone an update on the status of the ANT-CTL uh, uh, issue, which will be issue number 312? I think this issue depends on uh, progress on NCTL. If there are some interesting commands that can be run out of clusters, and we'll consider publishing the binaries. Uh, if not much progress is made there, then I think we should just postpone publishing the binaries. Okay. Makes sense. And uh, uh, this one, uh, the number 244, unfortunately, I don't remember. I never remember this one, Antoine. I know that we discuss it every we discuss it every meeting, and every meeting I I, remember, I forget what this one is. This one is about. Can I think you... the short update is uh, it's just a test which is uh, flaky, which was flaky on kind because we are <clears throat> because of how in some tests to test how cleanup works for uh, Entria, we delete the data plane, so oftentimes it creates issues with core DNS and connectivity and. And that's why, and, and on kind, it's more of an issue because of how the, the I mean, the PNIC, in a way, the, the NIC of the, of the container is attached to the bridge. Uh, so, but the short update is that uh, Chen and I are looking into this, uh, into making this better. Uh, some patch I merged uh, for the release, which is like preserving the OBS uh, flows on restart is helping with it, but I, I don't think it's sufficient, but we have some ideas. Good. So before we go on any further, um, as we're going through this list, can I mark which ones are active and which ones are not, um, so that we at least have an idea uh, which ones that we're actually actively working? Um, oh yeah, uh, sorry, I, isn't that the life cycle active uh, label? Yes, it's the X, yes, and some of them are labeled, some of them are not, so I just wanna make sure that those are correct. So the first one that we looked at deleting Antria was not, is not currently being, or is that active? Antonin. Well, hopefully the, the, that we'll be active next week. <laughs> I can, I can. Okay, that's fine. Let's don't put it. Let's don't mark it as active. Um, the the metrics one was that active or not? I have it currently marked as active. The Prometheus metrics. Yeah, yeah, it's Anyways. active. No, no, ah, Prometheus is active. Yes. Okay, great, great. Um, ant cuddle binaries, uh, nobody's working on releasing for different platforms right now currently. So not active. And then this one was active. Okay. Let's, let's continue on. I just want to make sure I've got the right status on these. Sort of flaky. Flaky, uh, the flaky network policy. Yes. Can I go, can I go ahead? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Flick I got what I needed. Policy test. Uh, it, it was opened uh, just a, a week ago, and I don't remember a lot of uh, activity, but it seems that uh, Antonan and uh, Chuan have been working on it, and then. Uh, okay. And then it stopped here. And is this like an upstream issue, Antonan, or is that something that we need to fix in our. Uh, uh, so it's fixed upstream, but uh, it's not available in a in a test image yet. Um, I see. It literally, Chan fixed it like last week. Uh, so we, we're we can mark it as active. We're basically it will definitely be done in done in time for the release. But we okay. were just keeping this open until this is actually fixed for CI. Otherwise, people may run into that issue and wonder why. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Sounds good. So basically, we can close this one as soon as the fix is available in the image, right? The test image. Or technically, this is already fixed, we could see, because it's not even an entry issue. But we can keep it open just for tracking. Then uh, the, we have this one on documenting ANT-CTL. And um, my question here is that, do we have anything to document at the moment? Why don't we move this to backlog until we have that ready? 
Uh, do we have a backlog? Yeah, we have a priority backlog. Okay, good. Yeah, we I'm definitely happy. have things to document because NCTL is already working, right? But um, it's not a work in progress. Yeah, let's don't prioritize that until we actually have some features that we want to uh, advertise on NCTL. Okay. We, we, well, we currently have what the, the the table listing and and the state of the uh, the OVS state. Um, yeah, that's part of the agent information command. Yeah, they'll probably. Um, a okay. Of things, so. Okay, I'll take a look at it and play with the and if I can do some documentation there, I'll I'll start on some of that. But I'm going to put it backlog right now. Okay. Okay, so exposing uh, the logs publicly for Jenkins CI jobs, which now has become uh, every publicly available Jenkins CI server, um, I don't think that, uh, I didn't see any activity in the past two weeks. And no, no, it's, I, it's definitely active. It's definitely ah, okay, active. good. So are we bringing up this server on uh, AC2? Where, where are we bringing it up? Yeah, yeah, and there is definitely a proof of concept working. I think we're trying to figure out some cost issues, but uh, basically everything is ready. Okay, good. But um, I mean, uh, if we, if, I mean, it, it might be nice for people like me that don't don't go to the Slack channel every day to periodically maybe put a summary here. I don't know if this could be useful just to keep track of what's going on, what, what's going on. But anyway, for this specific issue, keeping it targeted targeted to 0 0.50 or whatever, it's not really important as it's not part of the deliverable. I mean, it's just good to have it uh, have the CI available upstream as soon as possible. Then uh, the next one is update OVS to 2.13 in Antria Docker image. Of course, we have to do it. And it should not be a big deal doing it for uh, uh, 050. And uh, apart from uh, uh, a better OVS, are we getting any, is it enabling any new particular feature that we want to leverage? Oh, it's fixing the next issue as a 348 container MTU size. Okay, good. Okay, so that's good to know. Which uh, means that... Yeah, uh, so, yeah, I would have done this already. I'm actively working on this. It's just that uh, Justin Petit left the OBS team and he was in charge of publishing the release tarballs. So that release tarball didn't get published and I opened uh, a PR for the OBS website so that the release tarball is published. Okay, so as soon as nice. it's approved, then I'll do that. Uh, hopefully they find someone to do this. So basically, this also means that uh, the next issue, 348, will be fixed by 404 automatically. So we get two issues for the price of one. Yeah, and that's commented in the issue description. I mean, Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. So the the path, the, the the next one, I want 361. We already discussed this. This is a, a good first issue. We keep it targeted uh, to uh, because it's a good thing to have, but uh, it will be probably a good activity for a new starter to the project. So yeah, someone, I don't... Claimed, someone claimed the issue already. So oh, good. Give him some time, and oh, uh, yes, it's, I, can, uh, I can ping him in a week or two. So yes, and uh, okay. And this one uh, about, uh, this is not uh, 417 about ESP header sides should be removed from the MTU is not the IPsec issue that Jan Juno was already, was discussing right now. Yes, it's a different one. Yeah, that's a different one. Okay, and is this also uh, a critical one, like uh, some, an issue that could grant a patch relief? Uh, this one is simple to, fix. Uh, if we will have a patch release, I can fix this together. But itself, okay. I think it's not that uh, serious yeah. because you can manually change the MTU uh, uh, whatever you want. Perfect. 
and uh, I believe uh, that issue 421 instead is the one that uh, Jean was talking before about uh, regarding the case, uh, the same use case that we have in the CI. Is that right? Okay. Right, I just created that issue, by the way. <laughs> oh, yeah, I noticed it is three minutes ago. <laughs> so that's right. Okay. And I'm creating another one for the, uh, the package of um, cool. I just mentioned. And uh, that will bring the payload for uh, this release to 12 issues. You might have noticed that GitHub has a bug. It automatically refreshes the page if you add an issue, but uh, it doesn't refresh the issue count. We need to report this bug to GitHub. They'll give us $1 as a bug bounty. Anyway, so uh, now this completes the discussion of the items. So far, we are looking good uh, for all the issues. I mean, uh, there is no issue that uh, we can say should be deferred already because we can make it. So I would like to keep all of them targeted keeping in mind that uh, for the IPsec issues, uh, which should be 417, 421, and 422, which is going to be created soon, uh, we will probably consider uh, releasing uh, a patch release. Five, perfect. So is there any other uh, item that we would like to add to this release? Uh, there's one more in my mind. Yeah. Since we'll start to have, hopefully we'll start to have the first customer um, um, of Antria from Linbus, right? Um, ideally we should start to uh, enforce some strict uh, upgrade um, um, policy. Like uh, when you upgrade, we cannot break any compatibility that uh, cause our traffic outage, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, so I think at least we, I think Chen is looking into that and to probably define some um, uh, policy we should uh, follow, policy or convention uh, when we make any um, protocol change or design change. And on the other hand, probably we should start to add uh, at least some basic upgrade tests in CI uh, to make sure we, uh, we're not break the, um, uh, traffic across versions. Um, so sounds like a good idea. Uh, do you think it's reasonable for 0 0.50 to expect to add upgrade testing to the CI or we may need a little bit more time for that? Um, I'm not sure if someone have uh, bandwidth to work on that. Uh, um, the, the, but I, I, I hope we can at least <laughs> say we targeted for 0 0.5. Okay, then, let, uh, let's start creating an issue and targeting it, targeting it, the targeting it, and then we'll see if uh, if we can make it. We'll, uh, we can meet again in two weeks' time, mm -hmm. and uh, we can decide. Do Even we have starting CI? At least something we can manually run before we uh, release the file. Right? Mm -hmm. Do we have issue three three one as part of zero point five on the Windows support? Mm. Three, um, no, it's, I'm not sure about it. Uh, I don't know because we are just starting. A, we are, we will create a feature branch. We said for Windows, so I'm right. not expecting that this is a task that uh, it can be concluded in uh, three or four weeks. I was expecting okay. Windows to be more at zero six or zero seven target, uh, unless we think that we can have something that we can deliver for zero five zero, but maybe we should listen from when we when we to see if she says, uh, so a, yeah. I, th I think this is more of a, a, a tracking of mechanics thing. So do we want, do we have individual, we've got the individual um, tasks that are being worked on as part of that. Um, do we know which tasks that are gonna be worked on during the period? It won't be targeted for the milestone release, but at least I can I go see. ahead and say this is being uh, worked on during I, the milestone uh, time I period. See. Uh, I see your point. Um, honestly, I don't think uh, I, I don't have enough visibility in what is uh, what, what the team is doing there to okay. see exactly what they are going on, do they are working on. But we can surely ask on it's, Slack. It, yeah, it's it, it's my responsibility to follow up on that. So I'll find out and see okay. which which of those issues that they're going to complete during this period. Makes sense.
Okay, so because we have because we originally wanted to see you know get Windows support as soon as we can into Q into Q two. So. Um, I think we already had a few patches in review. Um, yeah, that's but fine. I, I still I still feel zero down five port is a little risky. Uh, maybe zero down six is more um, um, feasible um, release for this Windows support. I guess. Yeah, I I think we just need to track this as like a larger like you said, a larger um, um, epic. So we, we can do that. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to create a separate epic for that. <laughs> OK. All right. And um, I don't have personally anything else that uh, I think it's worth adding to 050. Honestly, considering the time frame of the release, uh, there is already quite a lot of stuff in it, and I don't want to make it even more loaded. I think it's a good payload and uh, should be good. So the next steps should be to evaluate in the next few days where whether we are able to uh, do a patch release for the IPsec issues or not, and. Um, then uh, uh, let's say longer, slightly longer term items. We we start a discussion on uh, visualization of uh, Prometheus data in the Octant UI plugin. And uh, well, I guess that's uh, that's that's the summary of today's meeting. Is there anything else that we would like to discuss for today? Uh, I have one item. Uh, yeah. So talking about this Windows support. Uh, actually, um, we need a few patches um, made by Carl Base um, okay. for OS, but it's not in uh, OS upstream repo yet. So I want to discuss what's our strategy here. Uh, should we uh, push for this change to be in upstream? Uh, no. Or um, before that, uh, should we just use Cloud Base OS build? Or yeah, the, we... the the first question is, is Cloud Cloud Base OVS build fully open source? Or do they have parts of it that is not completely open source? In my understanding, it's open source, so Apache 2 license. Yeah, no, no, that was my understanding as well. I just want to figure out if these patches that we need are entirely from the cloud base, are entirely from the open source bit. In that case, I think it should be fine to package the cloud base OVS in the Windows image, uh, at least for the short term, because it makes sense to ask for these patches to be applied to upstream OVS but that could have timelines that uh, are not predictable for us and that we cannot control. But In the meanwhile, that the change is available upstream, I am fine with packaging the uh, cloud based OVS. Being Apache 2, it's not, uh, it's, not, it's not going to create any problem in terms of uh, adoption of the license. Like, you know, it would have been a problem if it was GPL, for instance, and some users might have preferred not to use it, but Apache 2, I see no problem. Yeah, that is also what I'm thinking, but I just want to confirm with you guys, like you have any concerns or you see any issues? I don't, how, how differ, like how much does it differ from the upstream in terms of, I mean, we have this one patch that we need. Is there other differences that we're going to have to accept or is it is it just a very specific patch you're looking for on the Windows side? Um, I don't, I didn't really look into <laughs> what the change cloud base made. Um, but I think they are mostly, uh, you know, forked the upstream OS and uh, made some Windows specific changes. So let me I, add, yeah, go ahead. Go one ahead. other question I had is, is when it does go upstream, what do you anticipate like making the switch back to upstream? Like, like unwinding that, how hard would that be? I guess no. Um, if we can um, port all the chains to upstream, I mean, exactly all the chains to upstream, then probably uh, there's no big complexity to uh, move from cloud based OS to upstream OS. Yeah. But if they change the code, I mean, uh, that's a different thing. I mean, if they change, right. uh, for example, how you create a port on OS for Windows, then 
colleagues with each other. So, in my understanding, the interfaces are absolutely the same. I don't even remember if they have some custom OpenFlow extension, but even if they have, we are just not going to, they have one, we are just not going to use it, so it should be okay. So, they are fully compatible with uh, the OpenFlow specification that we use. Uh, and, yes, I think the, the potential issue, I, I'm not sure it's a, there's a high chance or not, I guess, no? But the potential issue is not an open flow. Uh, it's more on uh, how, the way you create a port on OS port on, on Windows um, without cloud-based change. If you run OS in Windows, um, actually, I, I, I forgot the details, but the, the, the way you create the OS port is different. Yeah, but, uh, the, but the, is the implementation different, which I understand, but even the interface that you like, uh, you know, the... Uh, the interface is different. Uh, what I mean that um, without color base change, yeah, um, probably you create an internal port on open with switch. Okay. Um, without, with the color base change, probably you don't create the internal port. I forgot the details. Probably we need to look the design document in a road. Okay. But I just mean the, the, the port type are different. I see. I see. Yes. So, so this means that uh, perhaps we might not be able to do then an upgrade with zero downtime. No, uh, it depends on uh, if we believe the cloud base change is the right way uh, to create port on Windows or not. If it's the right way, we should push that to being up during OS. Okay. And then uh, and probably uh, no matter it's cloud base or up during, finally you have the same way to create port. Okay, okay, makes sense. Good. I, I, I personally feel, I mean, cloud-based guy, uh, I didn't look into that, but I think they must have a good reason to, <laughs> to make the change. So, uh, and they are actively maintaining the Windows code. So um, probably we should just push their change to upstream. And uh, there's no really behavior change when we move to upstream. Okay. Perfect. Cool. Anything else on Windows? One other question for uh, Jinjin on issue 421. Is that also part of the, the IPsec fix? Uh, so what's 421, sorry. <laughs> So it's the uh, entry agent does not update tunnel type. I see. I, I think we should fix that together because without that, we can we cannot pass the IPsec in CI. Okay, got it. Makes sense. So what was the decision for a cloud base? We're going to push for the changes to be merged upstream, but what do we, we do? Have, we haven't time? we haven't made a decision, but I think if the license fits, what what I don't want to do is stagnate our capability to push forward on Windows support. Um, and if we think the risk is relatively low in terms of interface changes, then I, I'd suggest that we we consider uh, going to that. Um. Yeah, the situation that uh, actually we already tried to commit with color base guy, uh, but so far the response is not very fast. So I assume. Um, so, so, so there haven't been responsive. They haven't been responsive to submitting that upstream to on their side, right? That's why we're having to look at this patch. Yeah. Okay. So, What's I the mean, chances uh, of us being able to submit that change upstream for them? Are they responsive? That one. To that? that one, I'm not really sure. I feel it's not very <laughs> friendly to these guys, right? <laughs> they made a change. <laughs> if they uh, okay. don't say anything, then we should. Uh, not um, push change yet, and if they uh, don't answer our queries for some time. I mean, I, what I don't know is like how extensive the patch is. Um, is that something that we could, if, if they're not being responsive, push that upstream ourselves? I think so. I mean, uh, it's not very big. So I, I, I think that would be the best, the best plan, right? Let's try to get a response from them, but if they're not responsive, then... Yeah. Uh, we, we preempt that and just push that upstream. Yeah. Okay, makes sense. Okay, so um, I think, I believe that um, with this, we can conclude uh, the discussion of Windows, uh, unless anyone else has uh, 
Anything else to add regarding Windows? Going three, going two, going one, and uh, adieu Windows. So we are done with Windows. And uh, is there anything else that uh, we would like to discuss? I've got one thing. Yep. Um, so for KubeCon EU, we're going to have an opportunity to demonstrate uh, Antria in the uh, VMware booth. And so if there is anybody that wants to contribute to um, what we should demo and, and what that demo should look like from a story perspective, um, start sending me that information and I, I need to, you know, get that uh, decided and put together, you know, within the next week or so. Good. Will do. And uh, hopefully there will be a KubeCon. We'll see. Well, but... that, I'm, 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 I've got a, I'm, I'm taking bets right now. So um, if you want in on the uh, wager. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so Cody, I had a question for you. If there is any progress yeah. on the work that you were doing with Abhishek and uh, the other people from the Kubernetes community about the testing framework for policy? Yes. So, um, We've made several modifications to not only the what we're testing and how we're testing it, but the testing framework itself. Um, I would like to get a review done. I, I, what, I, what I've asked Jay is to come speak at our next uh, community meeting, or if we, could, if we could schedule one for next week, if that's possible, um, to present his work so that we can talk about. There's a couple of things, for example, he's got some scripts in in his branch and hack and some other say so he wants to know like where to put some of the go code that he's working on for the tests um you know etc if these things are eventually going to end up at upstream do we want to host them temporarily or do we want them just to because they are going to test antria uh, or do we want to just try to go straight to upstream so I, I need some input from from the team on like where to put those tests um and also to take a, a review at the strategy of the tests as well I'm going to try to take a look today. Okay. And again, like we can bring him into the community meeting and, and, and have him kind of present, you know, what he's been, been working on. Um, the key thing here is he's, he's really trying to uh, test all the iterations, um, all, all the boundary conditions of all the tests and then, and do it more efficiently without having to like restart pods and things. Um, so the test should execute faster, even though it's going to be uh, running more tests. All right. Okay. Thanks for the update on this front. So do you think that then we should schedule, uh, keep the meeting scheduled for next week? And so that we Let's, can... Yes, it's, yeah, especially with KubeCon coming up, there's other things that are happening. So um, let's let's keep the me meeting on for next okay. week. Okay, we can do that. Uh, does everyone is everyone okay with having a meeting uh, next week as well? Yep. No yeah, sure. Sounds good to me. Perfect. Good. So, any other topic that you would like to bring up for today? Uh, you have uh, 25 seconds. I guess, uh, yeah, the proposal to talk about Entria was accepted for reject. So assuming KubeCon is maintained, rejects will be maintained. And I, I'll do a, a five minute talk on Entria the weekend before KubeCon. Great, congratulations. Perfect. So that will be, so the uh, reject is the weekend before KubeCon, right? Yeah, that's correct. Um, not the same location, but very close. Very close. Yeah, so you'll also get to spend the weekend in Amsterdam. Which yeah, I booked is... everything on Monday. <laughs> so, uh, so you have to change your booking as well. No, no, I, I waited for confirmation. Uh, oh, okay. From okay, perfect. All right. Excellent. And. Uh, is there anything else that you would like to bring up? Any last topic? We still have 11 minutes. If you want to talk about anything, we have time. Otherwise, uh, we can get back 10 minutes and 40 seconds of our lives and go on with our day. So it seems that uh, we are perhaps at the end of the meeting. And uh, therefore, I would like to wish everyone a good morning, a good afternoon or good evening and uh, talk to you next Wednesday. Sounds good. Thanks right. so much.
Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye.